April 26, 1986, Pripyat, Ukraine. Let's dive deep into the history and science behind what became known as one of the most catastrophic events of the 20th century. This is the story of the Chernobyl disaster. Today, we will explore not only what happened on that fateful day, but also how the radiation released affected the human body and the population of the region, a topic that remains of utmost importance in modern science. Chernobyl, located in Ukraine, then part of the Soviet Union, was the scene of one of the worst nuclear catastrophes in history. In the early hours of April 26, 1986, Reactor No. 4 of the nuclear power plant exploded during a poorly executed safety test. But what led to this disaster? We will explore the crucial events and systemic failures that led to the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, a chain of errors and neglect that culminated in one of the greatest tragedies of the 20th century. Our account begins in the 1970s, with the development of the RBMK reactor, an ambitious project of the Soviet Union to lead the nuclear race. This reactor was innovative, but contained critical design flaws, including a positive reactivity coefficient and the absence of a robust containment shell, deficiencies that would later prove fatal. As we move to the night of April 25-26, 1986, the Chernobyl plant was preparing for a test aimed at improving the safety of the system in the event of a power outage. This test, ironically, required disabling automatic safety systems a controversial decision that reflected both political pressure and overconfidence in technology. Human error played a crucial role. The team, under pressure to complete the test and with inadequate training to handle the peculiarities of the RBMK, ignored critical warning signs and in trying to restabilize the reactor, inadvertently triggered a rapid and uncontrollable power surge. The combination of design flaws, human error, and political negligence created a perfect storm. At 1.23 a.m., after two devastating explosions, tons of radioactive material were released into the atmosphere, marking the beginning of a disaster of unimaginable proportions. When these radioactive isotopes enter the human body, they can cause a series of biological damages. Radiation damages cells in various ways, but one of the most significant is through the breaking of DNA chains which can lead to cellular mutations and cancer. We will discuss later how radiation affects different organs and tissues. To understand the impact of radiation on the human body, we first need to understand what radiation is. Radiation is energy in the form of waves or particles. In the context of Chernobyl, we are talking about ionizing radiation, which has enough energy to knock electrons off atoms, creating ions. Alpha radiation consists of helium nuclei composed of two protons and two neutrons. It has a very high ionizing power but a very limited range and can be blocked by a sheet of paper or even the outer layer of human skin. Although they do not penetrate deeply, they are extremely dangerous if ingested or inhaled, as they can cause significant damage to internal tissues. Beta radiation consists of high energy electrons or positrons, has a negative electrical charge for electrons and positive for positrons, and a much smaller mass than alpha particles. These particles have a lower ionizing power than alpha but can penetrate more deeply into materials. They are also mainly dangerous when ingested or inhaled, but compared to alpha, they can penetrate further into the skin, representing a greater risk of damage to deeper tissues. Gamma radiation is high frequency and, therefore, high energy electromagnetic radiation, having no mass or electrical charge. It has a great penetrating power, being able to pass through the human body and even dense materials like lead and concrete, although these materials can attenuate its intensity. It can be extremely dangerous due to its ability to penetrate tissues and organs. Neutron radiation consists of free neutrons, uncharged particles found in the atomic nucleus. They can penetrate deeply into materials in the human body, and when colliding with atomic nuclei, can induce secondary radioactivity or cause nuclear reactions. They are particularly dangerous due to their ability to penetrate and activate materials, including biological tissues. When Reactor 4 exploded in the early hours of April 26, 1986, it released a colossal cloud of radioactive material into the atmosphere. This included isotopes such as iodine-131, cesium-137, 
strontium-90, and plutonium-239. These isotopes, with varying half-lives, began a silent but devastating journey across the European continent. Driven by prevailing winds, these radioactive isotopes traveled northwest, first hitting Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine. Within days, the cloud reached Scandinavia, spreading significant radiation in Sweden and Finland, countries that first alerted the world to the disaster. The complex interaction between European meteorology and topography led to an irregular distribution of contamination. Distant areas like the United Kingdom and parts of Italy received higher levels of radiation, while parts of Eastern Europe, closer to Chernobyl, were relatively less affected. Iodine-131, with a half-life of just eight days, caused immediate concern for food contamination, particularly milk, and its impact on the thyroid. Cesium-137, with a half-life of about 30 years, posed a long-term problem, contaminating soils and ecosystems. This dispersion did not respect national borders and led to a global reassessment of nuclear safety standards and radiation protection measures. And before we proceed, I need to ask for your like. This is a very new channel, we hardly have any subscribers, so we really need your like and subscription. Only then can we reach a level that allows us to continue and improve the quality of the videos, okay? Feel free to comment as well. We need suggestions and critiques. Any comment will help us. So, please, hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. Well, getting back to it. The effects of radiation on the human body vary depending on the dose and type of exposure. Immediate effects include acute radiation syndrome, characterized by nausea, vomiting, hair loss, and in severe cases, death. In the long term, Concerns shift to an increased risk of cancer and genetic diseases. Following the Chernobyl disaster in 1986, a series of studies was conducted to assess the long-term impacts of radiation exposure. A key group of interest were the liquidators, workers charged with cleanup and containment at the accident site. Studies indicate a significant increase in the incidence of thyroid cancer, leukemia, and other cancers among these workers. Additionally, the resident population in the surrounding areas, especially children, showed an alarming prevalence of thyroid cancer. The inhalation and ingestion of radioactive iodine-131, a byproduct of the explosion, was a direct cause. Statistically, there was an almost five-fold increase in the incidence of thyroid cancer in children from the region, compared to pre-disaster levels. In the long term, studies point to an elevated risk of various diseases, including cardiovascular disorders and cataracts, among those exposed to high levels of radiation. Surprisingly, the overall incidence of cancer in the general population did not show as dramatic an increase as initially predicted. This can be attributed to immediate evacuations and food safety measures adopted. However, the psychological trauma and social impacts continue to be an area of concern, affecting the quality of life and mental health of those affected. Chernobyl serves as a crucial case study for understanding the effects of radiation on humans, highlighting the need for quick and effective responses in future nuclear emergencies. Following the disaster, a major containment and cleanup operation was initiated. In parallel, scientists and doctors worked tirelessly to understand and mitigate the effects of radiation on affected individuals. Treatments for radiation poisoning such as the use of chelating agents for specific isotopes, were employed. The Chernobyl disaster in 1986 was a watershed moment in nuclear medicine and emergency radiological response strategies. Initially, the medical response focused on acutely treating those affected by radiation, primarily plant workers and first responders. This included blood transfusions, bone marrow transplants, and supportive treatments. From this experience, there was significant advancement in understanding and treating acute radiation sickness. The emphasis shifted to prevention and early detection, especially regarding thyroid cancer. Prophylactic administration of stable iodine to block the absorption of radioactive iodine by the thyroid became standard practice after nuclear exposures. Moreover, there was an increase in research and development of chelating agents, which help remove radioactive elements from the body, reducing internal radiation burden. 
long-term epidemiological monitoring of those affected was established, contributing to a better understanding of the long-term health effects of radiation. The lessons of Chernobyl also propelled improvements in nuclear safety guidelines and emergency response protocols, emphasizing the importance of preparedness and rapid response in radiation exposure situations. Chernobyl was not just a nuclear disaster, it was a crucial lesson in nuclear safety, policy, and accountability. The disaster shaped nuclear energy policies and drove significant advancements in radiation medicine. The tragedy of Chernobyl is not just a dark chapter in the history of nuclear energy, but also a pivotal point in the development of medical strategies and responses to radiological emergencies. This catastrophic event highlighted critical failures not just in nuclear safety practices, but also in preparedness for radiological disasters and subsequent management of public health crises. The legacy of Chernobyl lies in how it transformed the field of nuclear medicine. It raised global awareness about the risks of radiation and spurred research and development of more effective treatments for radiation exposure. The disaster also redefined public health policies, emphasizing the importance of prevention, emergency readiness, and swift response, especially in regards to the administration of stable iodine in nuclear exposure situations. Additionally, Chernobyl served to strengthen international collaboration in research and knowledge sharing in nuclear medicine and radiological safety. The international community, learning from the mistakes and horrors of this disaster, began to pay more attention to the importance of transparency, international cooperation, and effective communication in times of crisis. Therefore, while Chernobyl remains a symbol of the potential devastating consequences of poorly managed nuclear energy, it is also a testament to human capacity to learn, adapt, and improve in the face of challenges, ensuring that the lessons learned continue to positively influence medical practice and nuclear safety worldwide.